welcome to the Clashing of Steel. And today I'm giving a shot to Total War Napoleon. Well, this is an interesting game. It uh, brings units closer to the modern era, to the era of uh, industrialization, which of course I somewhat like. I mean, these ranged line infantry units, they require less single unit management than many other Total War games when you're dealing with the sword infantry, spear infantry, anything which you probably have to manage a bit, a bit more. I mean, I actually am somewhat of a fan of uh, Total War Napoleon. I think it's one of my third preferred Total War games. First one of course being Arena, as long as it remains with us. But surprisingly enough, I had never tried PvP in Total War Napoleon, so I just went into quick PvP and I joined someone fighting something probably in the Grand Campaign. As you can see the recording has been going on for actually quite a while and I don't know why he decided to choose this side of the map. I mean, picking a side where you can easily block off one side. I can that understand that from a defensive perspective. But he's being quite offensive or making offensive moves against me. I have set my units up so that uh, I could do the maximum damage output and so that I would have uh, reinforcements right in the back creating a perfect situation where I can uh, deal with uh, engaging cavalry or infantry who wants to engage my marksmen in melee what actually also is comforting is well that wasn't comforting that's a goddamn mortar what's comforting is that his units are somewhat spread I mean he has the main force up front and the other one in the back I probably can't finish them off with my cannons. So I just have to make an offensive move against him. I'm going to have to deal with the infantry first. I can't just go after the artillery unit, the mortar unit. But to improve my chances or the speed of dealing with opposing infantry, I'm spreading my units out. And I have another line of infantry right in the back to fill in, cover any engagements that should happen with the first line. Or I can always just use the second line to step in if the first line should fail. And uh, because of my spread units, the formation I'm using, it's good against the opposing ranged, if I can focus them correctly in a small area. But they're horrible against the infantry engagements. I mean, a couple of units of cavalry can easily route that unit. While speaking of cavalry, I'm going to send mine in. He has the light infantry right up front here. I can engage that, rush through that right after the mortars with my cavalry. If he does not use his infantry to engage me in melee, or my cavalry in melee, I should stop the annoyance that is the mortar. I'm not quite sure how this is gonna play out. I mean, they're already suffering moral damage. They basically would even have to engage me with one unit of infantry and one unit of cavalry, or maybe just with infantry to just push me away. I mean, that's why I have the second line, just to be safe. But that would probably affect my units the most. He's being quite stationary and he hasn't created a proper line which I can use. I mean, he has created a line up front here, through which my cavalry is going. And it seems my cavalry routed them. Nice. So now there is no more line and I can go after the catapults. I mean, even the easy way to defend catapult would be, or the mortar, would be to put units inside of it. That would be a simple way. I mean, he has the infantry here just to block me out. To keep out any opposing uh, horsemen or infantry. Well, I am not a tactical mastermind. I'm just using logical thinking and taking a slight risk here. I mean, sending his cavalry against mine, that is also an option. But... Uh, I already routed one mortar unit, and now I'm gonna send it after the other one. I don't even care if I lose this unit. If I have killed the mortars, I have already won, basically. If I just eliminate the key figures that do massive moral and uh, physical damage, I can easily manage my own cannons against him. And if I do have the numbers, I can withstand the most what he can throw at me. Here, near the cannon, I basically may even have three lines of units if I really want to push it. I exactly don't know what he's planning, what his idea is, but right now he has lost the key figures or the key units in his army. 
He's not using the cavalry properly. He should have uh, force engaged me from the middle, creating uh, flankable sides. I may have been able to counter those, but... I mean, just forcing me to fight on this side, you already ruined your chance of flanking me from one side, so I can only expect you from the other side. Unless you're trying to double down and pierce through my units. Or through my infantry line with your cavalry or infantrymen. That could work if you if my units are spread like this. If I would have nothing, if I would not have second line behind it, he could easily just uh, force attack single location, deal with my cannons, spread out and annihilate me. But uh, he's actually not forcing me to spread out that much. That is why I have the second line behind me. That is why my second line can always cover the first line or sacrifice the first line in hopes of destroying whatever is engaging it. Well, I mean, he now only has infantry and cavalry to throw at me. He can't. Uh, he won't get any mortar support anymore. I mean, he could have probably beaten me. He could have probably destroyed my soldiers' morale with uh, cannons. But instead, he brought the mortars right behind the front line and tried to go after my artillery unit with those units. And because it was right behind the front line, I just had to eliminate the front line in preferable location. And if you did not double down on that location, I could just as easily go after the artillery unit. And now he's starting to do the piercing maneuver. You see, all his units are moving towards my infantry in this area here. And he will destroy those. It seems he's sending in everything right now. I mean, I have my infantry and this other cannons as well. I have created a nice little bottleneck through which if he should charge after my cannons he will get uh, massive damage from my infantry. But, uh, well, I mean, this piercing move is a wee bit too late and he does not have the numbers for it anymore. And since I understand that the push in the middle is also a desperate move, and he doesn't have the numbers for it, he doesn't have the manpower, I can create a side where I can harass him with two three units at the same time. But still, I'm also going to have to deal with the cavalry units that might want to go after something else and something special. And oh, he did route my unit, he forced him to run. With the current wide line formation that I'm using with most of my infantry, it doesn't take much to route them. But uh, the trade-off can be great if your opponent does not engage you in melee. So in about a minute this player will ult f4 because he was pretty much defeated. Well, I have played Total War Napoleon for a while. I mean, I haven't played it uh, since I started playing Arena, at least not a lot. But it used to be one of my go-to games. I like the defensive battles, the Grenadiers, and to be honest, naval battles in this game are really remarkable. You can basically create your own formations in naval battles. And I'm gonna, probably going to make another video about that uh, during the upcoming month. But well, since I have one, there is not much more to say. I did create a Discord channel for those who wanted to play with me, who said it like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I didn't have time back then, I do have a bit more time right now. So I'll leave it in the video's description. Oh, this has been a long battle. And the opposing commander died. So, anyways, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.